Today is gonna to be a very fun video because I'm gonna be doing an unboxing and review of a card that I keep in my wallet every single day and it's one that I just can't go a day without, all right? And that is the Chase Inc. Unlimited card. We're gonna talk about the benefits of the card, we're gonna get an up-close look at it and have a really fun unboxing experience hopefully as well. So if you do find this video helpful or mildly entertaining, don't forget to be awesome, give me a big thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notifications for alerts, and if you are in the market for a new credit card, particularly the Inc. Unlimited card, make sure you apply using the referral link down in the description below. When you apply using that referral link, it greatly helps support the channel, and I can't thank you all enough for doing that so far. So Kayla actually applied for this card, and we skipped the whole watch me apply thing because we've done a few of those on the channel recently, but I do want to give you the background on exactly what happened with her application because it wasn't necessarily the easiest card for her to get. So Kayla applied in November of 2022 when she was at 624. However, two cards were going to drop off in November and she would be officially under 524 on December 1st. Even though she was at 624 at the time of the application, she went ahead and applied anyway. And guess what? she was denied. The reason for the denial did not include the number of cards open within the past 24 months, which was really interesting. The reasons given were the length of time since the oldest credit card had been open was too short, and there were too many credit cards with balances. And this made sense because we did have some credit card balances at the time because we were already doing some holiday shopping. Now, Kayla pays off her cards every single month, so we knew it was just a matter of time of paying off those balances before we called the reconsideration line. So that's exactly what she did. She just paid off the balances like she does every single month, and she called the reconsideration line. Now, for those of you not familiar with the reconsideration line, if you get a credit card denial for some reason, there's usually a process to call for reconsideration. So if a credit card issuer gives you a reason for denial of the card and you can rectify that, just like Kayla's case here, where all she had to do was pay down some balances, then you can call and have them reconsider your application within 30 days. So that's something to keep in mind. Just because you get that initial denial letter doesn't mean that's the end of the road for you. Now, even though she called the reconsideration line, they never even mentioned the reasons that she was actually denied in the first place. Instead, they only had questions about the business, the business structure, the revenue, and how much she'd spend on the card. And then after a 10 minute conversation with the reconsideration line, she got approved. It was that simple, all right? So nothing too crazy there. She did have to do a few extra steps in calling the reconsideration line and making sure her balances were paid down. At the end of the day, she ended up getting the card without any further issue. And it looks like that card should be coming in the mail very soon. I'm gonna do an unboxing of this and then we're gonna do a full review on exactly why I like keeping this card with me every single day. So let's get to the unboxing. Okay, my mail delivery person is coming right down the road. I see them right over there and they're coming. Hey. How's it going, sir? I'm so happy that you're delivering another credit card for me today. Do you ever get tired of delivering cards to me? I'm always kind of curious, and I want the truth. You can't handle the truth! Okay. Thank you very much for that. Very nice mail delivery people around here. I don't know why everybody's so fussy. All right, so it comes in an envelope, no big unboxing or anything like that. It's just a regular envelope. It is a thick envelope though, and there's nothing more satisfying than cracking through an envelope when you know there's a new card inside, right? So we're gonna see exactly what's inside of this envelope. Let's pop her open. First of all, we have the guide to benefits. Now, if you're new to points and miles, make sure you take these into consideration and don't just dump them in the trash. Your guide to benefits is gonna be very important, especially as you're learning this whole process actually read these things. For everybody else like me that's been doing this for a few years, um, you can probably skip that. So we'll leave that down on the floor. So the next piece here is the business card agreement. And this has all the terms of the business card. It also has an FAQ section as well. So again, if you're new to all this, make sure you check out the FAQ section because this may help you out. I don't really need it. I've had enough uh, business cards in my life. I think I'll be okay. What does Chase do with your personal information? Do I really want to know? No, I don't. I like it when companies take the time to educate consumers on exactly what all this card can do. And these color brochures can definitely help because you may have signed up for the card for one reason, not even realizing that there were extra benefits that you could utilize and they're gonna be in these brochures. So I like that they take the time to do that. Next, we have the business card agreement, rates and fees table. Rates and fees, always a lot of fun. One thing to keep in mind here though, I always like to make sure that you're aware of this. The foreign transaction fees are really important because it varies per card. This one carries a 3% foreign transaction transaction fee. So something to keep in mind, especially if you do a lot of international travel. All right, now this is the fun part because this contains the card. I'm going to open this up. It looks like she has a credit access line of $3,000, a little bit on the low end, but you never know what you're going to get with Chase. And we're going to open it up. Oh, 
And just getting a first glance at this card, it is a dark, really dark navy bluish card with silver accents. And it's a very simple looking card. In my opinion, I wish that they would do more to add some pizzazz to these cards because, you know, the ink cards are pretty popular. I understand that. But when you're looking at a business card, I always think it's nice when you have a business card to give it a little bit more oomph. The overall feel of this card is kind of in the middle of the road, right? It's not a thick card like an American Express Platinum card, but it's not an overly flimsy card either. It's kind of somewhere in the middle, even around the borders. It's just got a dark navy blue look to it all the way around. And I don't know, it's kind of boring and dull. Yes, it says business unlimited. The letters and digits are raised on the front. That's perfectly fine. I don't have a problem with that. It's just not that exciting when you compare it to other cards that are out there, in my opinion. Now let's hit on some of the reasons why Kayla picked up this card, and there are actually a few. Number one, the welcome offer on this is higher than it's been. If you wanted to take advantage of getting an Ink Unlimited card, now would be the time to do it because this offer is great. The welcome offer as it stands right now is 90,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards or $900 cash back after spending $6,000 in purchases in the first three months. It's important to note that you can earn ultimate rewards that can be transferred to partners if you have either the Sapphire Preferred, Sapphire Reserve, or Ink Business Preferred. That's really important because on the website it will tell you cash back or points multipliers, and that all depends on if you have one of those three cards that I just mentioned. If you have one of those three cards, then you can earn ultimate rewards with this card. And it's really easy to earn ultimate rewards with this card because you'll wanna keep it in your wallet every single day. Why is that? because you can earn unlimited 1.5 times points on all purchases. And this is really important. So if you're looking at your wallet and you have several cards, which card should I use for a particular transaction? Well, first you should always use your men's spend card. If you're trying to get a large signup bonus, spend on that card first. Earning points in big chunks through signup bonuses is the best way to build up your account when it comes to points. The next best thing to do, in my opinion, is have a great catch-all card. And a catch-all card is something that can be used really for all purchases. Let's say you have a transaction that's in a particular spend category that doesn't have a high multiplier on any other card that you have in your wallet. That catch-all card can be used to earn points at a higher rate than most other cards. Usually most other cards, if they have higher multipliers in certain categories, they may only earn one times points on any other purchases. Well, why not have a card like the Ink Unlimited that earns unlimited 1.5 times points on all purchases? So if you're not sure what to do, you can always use this card, and that's why I recommend keeping it in your wallet every single day. Another card that's similar to the Ink Unlimited card in the Chase lineup, let's say you're not interested in a business card, is the Freedom Unlimited card, which again gives you 1.5 times points on all purchases outside of the higher multiplier categories associated with that card. So either one of those are great to keep if you're trying to earn Chase Ultimate Rewards and have a good catch-all card there. And there are some additional travel and purchase coverage benefits, but nothing out of the ordinary, nothing crazy where I'm like, oh, absolutely use this card for this particular need. But just know that those benefits are there and available, but those benefits are available with a lot of other cards as well. So just keep that in mind. Long story short, when I'm thinking about this card, I'm thinking about the sign-up bonus right now, and I'm also thinking about having a great catch-all card. So if that is a need for you, that is where this card fits in at this moment right now. So I would definitely take advantage of it. Make sure you use my link down in the description below as well if you are interested in the card that does help support the channel. And if you've watched some of my What's In My Wallet videos, you'll notice that this card shows up very frequently. And the reasons that I just discussed are why that is the case. So if you're new to points and miles, and especially if you're trying to open up your first business card, let's say, this is a great way to get a great catch-all card and a great business card as well. So let me know your thoughts on this. Do you have the Ink Unlimited already? How do you find it to be most useful? Is it something that you keep in your wallet every day? And also if you have other cards in the Chase lineup, is this your catch-all card for Chase. I want to know how you use this particular card because sharing your stories and experience will help someone out. We have a lot of new people in Points and Miles that are watching the channel. So any information you can leave down in the comments below will definitely help someone out. Again, make sure you use my referral link down in the description below if you're interested in this card or any other. When you do that, it greatly helps support the channel and I can't thank you all enough for doing that so far. If you found this video helpful or mildly entertaining, don't forget to be awesome. Give me a big thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notifications for alerts, and when you click on the Brandon Boyd Show, click, 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 you're gonna get the latest information on credit cards, points and miles, travel, money, finance, and everything in between, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. We'll see you soon.